you uh, to make sure we can work correctly on this. Okay. You, you helpfully mentioned social care just now. Should people be paying more tax to get better social care? Well, we are absolutely committed to reforming the adult social Not care system. Not my question. System. Should people be paying well, more tax? Well, I, 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 we'll bring forward our proposals, and I'm very happy to come back on your programme when the details are published to discuss how we will so, pay for better and reformed adult social care. Now, it's worth remembering, Andrew, that we put £6 billion, uh, to help councils that is unringfest to include uh, additional support for adult social care plus the additional two billion specific funding to reduce transmission and bolster the workforce right. so, in social care. So, but we will take it, we'll, we'll, we'll work with national partners, with local partners, and those who would live the experience of the social care sector to get this right and get it right as we are determined to do. So as a leading Conservative minister, you can't sit there and tell me we should not be raising taxes. You stood on a manifesto specifically promising not to raise VAT or income tax or national insurance. Are you going to break that promise you made to the voters? Well, as I say, um, we're determined to reform the social care system. When we bring forward those proposals, I am more than happy to come back on your programme and explain how we're going to pay for that and explain the proposals. Okay. The important thing is not to, to, to try and sort of run ahead of ourselves on this interview um, because okay. no proposals have yet been published. It's only right that when we publish them, then we can come and discuss them on your show. I think it's pretty clear that you are going to break that manifesto pledge. And it's not the first one, of course, that this government has broken. You promised people that you wouldn't cut foreign aid, and then you cut foreign aid. You promised people you'd keep the triple lock and pensions. You're not going to keep that. You promised people you wouldn't raise taxes, and you are. Is there any reason for people to believe or even read a future Conservative manifesto? Andrew, you've just reeled off a load of stuff other than the foreign aid, which we have promised temporarily to, to scale back because of the uh, size of the financial uh, crisis that we have had to face because of this uh, unprecedented situation of the pandemic. Um, you, you, you're, you're being presumptuous in everything else that... that uh, oh, well, uh, well, I'm delighted. Yeah. If, if you can tell me that... But if you can tell me that you're not going to raise taxes, if you can tell me that you're going to keep the triple lock, then that's very interesting and people will be fascinated. But you can't tell me that, can you? No, because I'm the vaccines minister, Andrew, and the <laughs> chancellor, uh, when he stands up at the dispatch box and shares with the House and with the country what uh, he will be doing in terms of... Right, OK. Uh, the, 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 how he, he funds whether it be the reform of the adult social care system, which this Prime Minister is determined to deliver, um, right. then well, I let's... would happily come on your programme and defend it and discuss it as part of the team, of course. But I, look, I, look be... forward to, I look forward to that very much, Minister. Um, your, sure colleague, your colleague Steve Baker says, of all the ways to break manifesto tax pledges to fund the NHS and social care, raising national insurance contributions must be the worst. And the reason he says that, I assume, is that two-thirds of people who get long-term social care are over 65 and they will pay no more under this scheme. The working people below that age will pay all the the money coming in, and that is simply and obviously, and many people would say grossly, unfair. Well, the one thing I can reassure you and my uh, colleagues, including uh, uh, Steve Baker and others, is that we will, when we bring forward our social care reform plans, have worked with national and local partners and those with lived experience of the social care sector. We want to get this right and it is our commitment that we will set those out, as we uh, uh, said we would in the Queen's speech uh, by the, later this year. And when we do so, then we can have the discussion as to how we're going to pay for it. Well, in the end, this is about fairness. And this is a tax on working age people, the national insurance one. Uh, to give you an example, a working family based, shall we say, in a rented flat in, shall we say, Hartlepool, would be paying hundreds of pounds more under this example. And then pluck out of the air somebody living in central London, call him, for instance, Nadim Zahawi, who has a large amount of property, uh, millions and millions of pounds of property, rental property in central London, would be paying absolutely no more at all. Diddly squat. Now, that is not fair. Well, as I say, I will happily come back on your programme when we publish the details and discuss why we think it's the right thing to do.
at this stage, it would be premature for me to engage in this. And I'm sure but your viewers... This, I'm, I'm, sorry to, because, because I'm sorry talking, to interrupt again, hypothetical. but... This, this, we're talking this, hypotheticals, and you're, you're, you're giving examples without seeing any detail of what the reforms look like. Well, it's how national insurance works, and every briefing is that national insurance is going to take the burden of this, for reasons that we can go into or not. But to give you another example, and this is not uh, theoretical, this is hard fact. If you raise national insurance by 1%, a 25-year-old earning £20,000 a year will pay an extra £104 each year. A 66-year-old earning £50,000 a year will pay absolutely nothing. And I put it to you again, that is an unfair way of approaching this problem. Well, you are you're absolutely right in um, challenging ministers about how we will be reforming the uh, adult social care system, which we are determined to do so, but I am not going to engage in a hypothetical uh, discussion when we haven't yet published the details. And you'll forgive me, right. but uh, that is, I think, in my view, humbly put to you, it would be a, a knee-jerk reaction. Okay. Let's see the Listen, detail. Let's see what the proposals are. We're, we're, out of to we're, out, we're almost out of time. But I vividly remember in one of our previous conversations you saying that vaccine passports were discriminatory. Are they now going to be used for large events? So one of the things uh, that we have learnt is that in large uh, gatherings of people, especially indoors, uh, the virus tends to spike and spread. The best way that we can keep those industries open in my view, in our view, is to work with the industry um, as we have done. And if you look at the exemplary uh, way that the Premier League has managed uh, to do this and open up football um, to uh, you know, fans getting back into the stadium through checking uh, uh, their vaccine status is the right thing to do. And of course, when the evidence that you're presented is so clear cut and that we want to make sure the industry doesn't have to go through open shut open shut um uh, uh, you know, sort of strategy then the right thing to Very. do is to introduce that by the end of september when okay. all over 18 well, year olds have had the, the, the two we're, jabs we're out of time but you've said that they, that would be the right thing to do thank you very much indeed mr zahawi for joining us thanks to all my guests and to you for watching nick robbins is going to be here for me filling in next week join him please at nine o'clock and goodbye